Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, European Crossover Webinar. And uh, a little bit of a late start here, trying to get everything to uh, uh, going up. Everything's up, but um, um, but thanks again uh, for your patience here. Uh, we do have the euro, and the euro it has been sliding a bit. The dollar pushing up just above what we've had as our resistance has just stayed steady at 97.95. Now, to me, the bigger story, to a certain extent, is going to be where equities are now. You can see here that we are continuing to go on and slide here. Uh, if you've been keeping up with the uh, webinar, especially like the FX Daily Roundup, I met, kept mentioning for the last couple of days, 31.23 was key. And we didn't close a couple of days ago, but in Asia, we pushed beyond that. Well, we came back and we uh, still were not able to close above 31.23 yesterday. And I said that I was going to open the door for much lower prices and much lower prices of what we're seeing right now. Uh, pushing here, we're already at uh, 31.05 here in the S&Ps, um, 82.93 and a, uh, three quarters on the uh, uh, NAS and on the uh, Dow futures, 27.770. Got a little bit of support coming here in the, in the, uh, um, uh, Dow futures at 2770, uh, uh, 27,753. So just a little bit lower, and then some huge solid support here coming in at uh, 27,691. So, uh, like I said, probably that may coordinate about the same place with about 3097 in the uh, SPs. Uh, gold uh, pushing up a little bit higher here. Uh, so, what do we do? Show some uh, back to back gravestone dojis here, but on a 30 minute, but I think we're still gonna push that way. Uh, looking at the uh, at the bonds, we're actually at 6014, we've actually been up as high, it looks like about 6017 here in the bonds and pump at the December bonds. Um, uh, December crude oil, uh, and I actually looking at that yesterday, I actually should have already rolled over, which I have now, to the January crude oil and um, Right now, current price, let me just move this here. In January, it's actually, wow, we've really come off quite a bit now. 55.26 here as crude is starting to go and follow with what uh, uh, naturally follow in the sense of uh, what we've seen here in equities. And bear with me, we'll just go on and uh, look at uh, the economic um, events for today. And other than producer prices, uh, German producer prices, uh, which came in um, actually a little bit weaker, uh, down two tenths. That's all we have in Europe. Did we do come into the States uh, we are going to have um, Canadian CPI. Um, bear with me. And that's going to be it for data, really, Canadian CPI. We do have um, the, what they call the mortgage market index. It's a real low tier, but that's at 7 a.m. Eastern, uh, very low tier. But that's it for the data. So we had the uh, German uh, producer prices at uh, 1 a.m. and um, came in at minus 2 tenths. With that, we're just going to go and touch right into the uh, into uh, some news. So it says the dollar rises as U.S.-China relations worsen over Hong Kong and tariffs. The dollar rose on Wednesday and trade exposed currencies fell after the U.S. president threatened a trade war escalation in China condemned a U.S. Senate measure backing pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. Well, um, you know, well, if you, you know, uh, I even tweeted about that. There was, you know, Trump over there going on about he's going to raise the tariffs, he's going to do this. If they don't agree, and you know the, the 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 BS line we've been hearing for the administration, people like Larry Kudlow coming on, you know the 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 uh, the deal is just around the corner, just around the corner, just around the corner. And, I, and as I mentioned over the last couple of days, I thought, you know what, the market is going to just say, you know, enough, you know, and it made no sense at the valuations that we we're at in the equities for PMs not to start taking profits. And and at this point now, you almost have to. 
I don't want to say laugh in the face of of uh, the potential that we'd see a rally that some some great deals around the corner, and hence you're now starting to see equities you know, slide. How much further we can slide back, we we will see, but uh, certainly doesn't look like it's around the corner. Um, China's wants slipped to a new two week low in overnight trading after President Trump threatened to raise new tariffs on Chinese imports if the trade negotiations fell. And once again, I made the point was that, you know, if you're close to doing a deal, you're not gonna be talking snack or doing, saying that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're just about there, you know, you're just about to sign the, sign the paper. You just need a few more I's, I's done and a few more T's crossed and you're done. You wouldn't be talking like that. that that's like, you're nowhere near close. China condemned the U.S. legislation aimed at protection, uh, protecting human rights in Hong Kong, saying the U.S. should stop interfering. After four days of falling, the dollar is up one-tenth against both the euro and the basket of currencies. Today, the main focus is the trade talks between China and the U.S., and we are all seeing risk aversion, said Plutter Malley's currency strategist, said Robert Bank. Malley says the U.S. Senate bill in support of Hong Kong could complicate progress towards a preliminary trade deal. Markets had hoped that a potential trade deal to end the 16-month U.S.-China trade war could be signed at a summit in Chile, which was scheduled for mid-November. The summit was canceled, leaving the outlook for a bit unclear. Let's see, go on. <clears throat> the prospect of a bottom, more all-encompassing deal will drag on well into the next year, he added. The market's worrying about the sort of exogenous shock to the process by the buildup of tension in Hong Kong. I ultimately doubt that either side will allow that to delay the process, Cole said. The Canadian dollar fell against the U.S. dollar to its lowest since October 11th after a speech by Bank of Canada senior deputy governor, uh, governor boosted the perceived likelihood of a rate cut. Uh, Trade exposed currencies took a hit from the U.S. worsening of China's trade relations. Aussie and New Zealand dollars were both down four tenths. Norwegian krona was down nine tenths. Demand for the safe haven currencies was relatively unchanged, with the Japanese yen up around one tenth against the dollar. Minutes from the U.S. Federal Reserve's uh, FOMC meeting in October are due up at 1900 GMT. I don't see that really making that much of a difference at all whatsoever. With that, uh, we're going to move into the analysis. And no change here with the euro. Um, as I've mentioned before, is the resistance is 1080. Even though we actually got above 1080, um, even though we got above 1080 um, on Monday, um, we're getting up to 1090. We go, um, but still, the key is that if we can close above 1080 on a daily daily basis, if it does, boy, we, we can go in and certainly move higher, um, and it would uh, negate the downside that we have here in the um, with the euro. But uh, that being said, um, there's no change here in the analysis. It's still going to remain 1080. And on the downside for, for the euro, uh, we're looking for 1035. But no real big change here, right here with the euro. So those uh, support and resistance, those are going to remain the same. And with that, we're going to move into the cable. So it says cable trade in a tight session on Tuesday, unable to take out the 2980 pivot. 
which is resistance. Uh, support for Wednesday. Wednesday is going to remain the same at 28.42. So I want to tell you what, I'm a bit surprised. It looked like, the, although we've seen some dollar strength, though, I mean, the dollar coming back, but it looked like we might be able to go and push past that pivot. Uh, 29.80, uh, you know, yesterday, I mean, the way the market was uh, holding its own on Monday, but uh, you can see right there. Now, it's not like as if we paired back very much at all. But no real changes whatsoever. You can see that still trading in a relatively tight range. Cable's really holding up, but I always thought we'd be able to push past that uh, 2980 pivot, open the door for an immediate move to 3050. So far, it's not the case. So it said also used up a little bit higher on Wednesday, but remains dead center in its range between 67.72 and 68.56. Well, you can see that with the two pink lines there. And what little it, it did gain, we turn around and give him right back up. You can see that? And to say we're dead center is exactly just that. I mean, really, I mean, we've just come right back to where we were at the opening or closing, uh, actually opening and closing of Monday. So it's uh, kind of uh, a little bit uh, humorous to see it there, but no changes here. With, like I said, dead center here in the Aussie. With that, uh, we'll move into with the Kiwi. Obviously, they paired back a little bit with uh, what appears to be uh, no progress with, or even a, a slide back, potentially, I should say, with U.S. trade talks with China. Uh, with Kiwi, Kiwi pushed up to the level 6436, which is minor resistance. You can see that there. Uh, the pair needs a daily close above 6493 to place bulls in control. Support is going to be 6439. I'm just going to adjust that there. And I put in there, oh, 63.49. I misspoke. So it's 63.49. I said, what am I saying? 64.39. It is 63.49. And we've actually moved the uh, um, upside to 64.93, um, although it doesn't seem like that's in jeopardy at this point. That we'll move into the dollar cad. Well, boy, what a turnaround we've seen here in the dollar cad. Um, let's go on and move into uh, the analysis notes there. So the dollar cad rebounded after coming 10 pips from the wheat's target, which was 3184. Remember when we had that, you know, it's what a good turnaround here we've seen here. You know, we had this, you know, as I said, remember, you can see that clearly. The gravestone doji here. Remember, we made a couple of pokes from the prior week at 32.69. The potential was to move up to, I think, around 3303 or 3306. And this was going to be our first resistance for the week before we took a pause. Now, that's last week, and we never were able to get past this 32.69. When we got this gravestone doge and we started sliding back, that opened the door for us to move lower. And our target for the week on this move lower was uh, 3184. Looks like our, we made it here to 3189. It's actually not bad. We were only off by five pips. Uh, and we turned around, we came and, and turned around and rallied back. And our resistance for yesterday was 32.50. Well, we got past that, and then we even made it past this initial phase of 32.69. Uh, so that being said, dollar cad rebounded after coming 10 pits from the week's target, 31.84. The pair got past resistance to 32.50. Upside potential is 33.03. And support is going to be 32.22. 
And I'll tell you what, this is a this is a pretty doggone good turnaround here. It really is. Now, obviously, you can see this level here at 33.36, but we already had a pretty good stout rebound here and some follow through. So once again, I like the resistance here at 33.03, and I'll be doggone if we're not too. Uh, we're almost there already, but I'm gonna stick with it. 33.03 for the resistance. Although the weakness we're seeing here in equities, certainly looks like uh, 3336 could be possible. Maybe not necessarily today, although I wouldn't be surprised with uh, the way equities are, are, are trading, but we shall see. Well done. Let's go on to the peso. Okay, the dollar peso is pushing hard with resistance coming in at 1943. Well, we've actually just tagged that. And support is 1928. We're going to stick with the 1943 once again. We are an area that a little bit, we find some support here on the spruce at 3105. Find support there on the, um, on the uh, YM futures. Uh, we just about hit that 27... Six, uh, 760. We just held it there, just above. We're actually rebounding, and uh, we're pulling back a little bit. Then now, it's not anything overboard, um, but we're going to stick with the 1943 for right now. So it's going to be our resistance here with uh, dollar peso, 1943. And support is going to be 1928. We probably can move that a little bit hard, but we'll stick with that 28. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll actually move to the previous level that we had before. And I'll let's take a look here. You see right there? Right there, which is 1932. Two. So it's going to be 1932.2 for support. Well, we're starting to get some movement here in this pace still, and I mean some back and forth movement. Still haven't done anything um, crazy here yet in the pace. So I'm talking about as far as it's still stuck in this area, um, but you are seeing some back and forth now. Um, let's go and take a look at the pay, uh, the dolly in. The dollar yen appears to be in the first phase of the rollover. Support is now 808, followed by 775, and resistance is at 868. Um, if you heard me on the uh, FX Daily Roundup, I was, I, you know, I'm really pushing about these uh, equities really tiring out. Not that I'm so bearish, it's just that, I, once again, my point is, is that if you're a portfolio manager and you've been, you know, experiencing awesome gains, I mean, if you, uh, we showed in the charts, if you look just from October, it's been a run. So you're 45 days from the end of the year, less now than 45 days now, you're about 40 days from the end of the year. Why are you going to sit around and take any chances? I mean, if your payout, what you're going to be getting at the end of the year depends on, on how you perform. Why are you going to stick around hauling on to the spoos at 31.23? Now we're at 31.05. So uh, I actually just came off of that. So my, and we know how the dollar yen has just been completely ignoring the move in the equities. And we said, if, you know, when you look at dollar yen, we talked about that. You, you could make the case this thing should be at 111. 
but it hasn't been. And that's why I said the things that make you go, hmm. And so I think a downturn, I think we're going to go to 105. If we get a decent pair back in the spooge, it doesn't have to be huge. I think we will go to 105. So why I'm saying it's in the initial phase of its rollover. So support's going to be 808 uh, with a uh, – uh, Beyond that, B775. Resistance will be 868. So let's go and update this. And let's go and move on to the cash dollar index. Well, no changes here in the cash dollar index. Um, Resistance is going to remain the same. Now, we're actually above it right now, um, which has been our resistance since 97.95. Uh, I'm really hesitant to even go beyond that. I'm just going to go with 98 even. That's it. Uh, respect where it's at is just a little bit above the 97.95, so it's a little bit ridiculous to say resistance is there when we, we're actually just above it. So I'll go with 98. I don't even want to give it the 98.11. Not that I'm so bearish to dollar index, and it can push higher, but I think we're a little bit stretched here. So let's go with 98. Support. We've had 51. Um, yeah, we'll still stay with that 97.51. With that, we'll go and move into the um, cross rates. Wow, this is just something else. This, look at this pair. It just simply won't move. Look at this. Look at this range. And as tight as the range has been over the last nearly three weeks or two and a half weeks, look at that. It's even gotten tighter over the last three days. Needless to say, there's just simply no changes here. We're just simply not even moving in the Kiwi yen whatsoever uh, bear with me wow no movement at all um so that's going to be still remain 6889 on the downside 7048 on the upside and with that we'll move into the euro yen We do have, you want to see right there from Monday, a little gravestone doji. Um, and it's right there at the place that we broke, which was support. We've come up here, and, but we're not moving very much here in the Euro Yen. Um, you can see coming right across here, there's a little bit of support, and it's been holding right there. Um, right there here i'm just going to give it just a little bit more room ah that goes almost all the way to the bottom unless the euro is not going to go anywhere and despite the weakness we're seeing in the equities i'm a bit surprised dollar yen is a little bit weaker here and we're not even seeing the yen garner that much the euro yen fading compared to some euro strength uh, i can't talk yen strength i'm going to stick with that 1970 there's no need to change that. And on the upside, is going to be 2088, so no changes here. So I'll move into the Euro wad.
Well, we've come right here into this resistance area. I mean, the good thing was, I mean, the, we had dropped below the trend line. We actually held, and when I say dropped, I mean, as we came back and defended it, I was adjusted it here on because we were able to defend it because uh, it was it was actually tighter. It was, I think it was like around here. So we'd actually broke below. We came up and reclaimed it and moved even higher. Uh, so we're giving it the benefit of the doubt. We're marking time. Aussie still looks like it's going to be weaker. So in this case, like I said, it's going to be right here at uh, 63.41, which still is the resistance from yesterday. Support was 61.46. Um, that we can move. Well, that's it right there at 61.48. So we'll update it for that two pips, but really no changes there. Let's go into Euro Kiwi. Well, this is starting to fade a bit. But it's another market. Some of these pairs, they're not even moving at all. Um, resistance is right here into that pivot. Not the pivot, but the um, apex, and which is a 7402. Support, if we do slide down here, Seventy-one sixty-eight. We had sixty-four, seventy-one sixty-eight. But same thing here. Not a whole lot of changes. Let's go move into the ASEAN. It's, am it's amazing how these markets are not really moving that much. Look at it. I mean, look, look. Like I said, not moving that much. Look at this. We're just. Not even moving here. Let's go and take a look at it on a um, two hour chart. We're dipping a little bit lower. Well, we know the inherent weakness in the Aussie, and um, it's going to be 73.57. So no changes there. The only difference is that the resistance is, is dropping lower here. And that's going to be uh, dropped down here to 74.25. Uh, let's go and move into the guppy. Well, we finally started to pair back, obviously, with some weakness that we've seen with Sterling. Uh, we did go and hold the, the this area here. Now, that was below what our buy chart support was, which was 4028. Looked like the guppy was getting ready to move higher. Um, certainly hasn't happened. We're actually holding this level right here. We're actually going to go on and stick with that um, for right now. Um, and... At that level was thirty nine sixty eight. Actually, have a little bit of a tweezer bottom right there, if we can hold it to the top of the hour. Um, and on the upside, actually, it's going to move this down here, right there. Which is going to be 4047. It might be a little bit strong if we do see starting come back. Um, let's move that up. It's actually right there. You see there? The break here. 
That's going to be there. And it's going to be 4063. And finally, let's go on and move on to starting odd. Well, we finally saw this pair pair back after flirting with that 90.58 area here. Resistance is going to come in right there. Once again, with the weakness in the odd, it certainly looks like I don't think we're going to see this this market fade too much. Uh, resistance will be 89.88. With support coming in. This is a good little area right here. Um, we're going to continue to see a little bit for the weakness. I just don't trust the odd. I just don't trust the odd. Um, some good resist support coming in right there, just below those lows, which is 88.97. We'll go with that 88.97. Actually, we even had the support even lower at 88.50. Um, If to allow for that, we're going to go with 88.63. 88.63, it's a little bit higher than yesterday's, but if we pull back a little bit, but once again, I do not trust this odd whatsoever. Um, with that, we're going to move into the equities again. We're actually seeing them come off their lows. Um, S&P's bottomed at about just under 3105, we're at 3109 and three quarters. 3110 is, is some resistance. It was actually the 50% on the pullback yesterday. Looked like we might even have got to that, but it didn't. Market stopped around almost at 3113 or 12, something like that. Um, so a little bit of resistance here. Um, as we pull, pull back, probably the more key resistance has come in. It looks to be around 3111. Um, nothing I'm seeing with a lot of volume until we get around 31, 31.12, there's some, between 31.12 and 31.14 and three quarters, there's some decent volume, but nothing out of the ordinary. Um, bonds did peer back a bit. We've already, we've come off 10 ticks in the bonds. Uh, topped out at 60.18. Uh, and we're actually trading at 60.08 now, so we've actually come off a decent amount in the bonds, we're at 60.07 now. Um, and on Dow Futures, next resistance level comes in at 27.817 and we're at 27.803. Gold is actually fading back a bit as we found some buyers in the spoos at 31.05. So we're peering back a bit. I thought we'd probably see a little bit more strength in, this, in, in gold. I thought we made a run up to about 1483-ish. Did not happen. We are seeing Boone's uh, rally, obviously, inter conversely with interest rates going lower. So I really do think that that's going to be the risk of the next uh, you know, week, in, week or so is for to see equities uh, continue to go and pair back here. Um, as I said, going into today's uh, economic data, other than what we had, which is German producer prices, which came in down minus two tenths, they were expected to come in flat, which was the Reuters poll. Uh, Canadian CPI inflation, they're expecting three tenths. Last month was positive, and last month was negative four tenths. So we'll see how that plays out. And then that's it as far as data. But thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover webinar. And uh, We'll catch you later in the chat room and have a good day trading.